In this video, we will be discussing the fundamental theorem of calculus. So, by definition, the fundamental theorem of calculus connects the two branches, the differential calculus, which we have discussed in the past, the tangent, rate of change, slope, and then integral calculus, which is where we talk about the area problem, which is the area underneath the curve. So the first part of the fundamental theorem states that if you have g of x, it is going to be equal to the integral from a to x of some function t, and we're taking the derivative of t. So if f is going to be a continuous function from a to b, x is going to vary somewhere in between those two values. If f happens to be a positive function, then the function g can be interpreted as the area under the curve or under the graph from a towards x. So if you think of g as being the area as you are heading towards x, so be the area so far of the function. For example, let's say you had a function below. Its graph is the function g equals from 0 towards x of some function of t. So we're going to find the following values and then we're going to sketch a graph of g. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the area under the curve. So if we start with g of 0, okay, that is this point g of 0. There is no area under this curve and so it's automatically going to be 0. So g of 1 is going to be everything under the curve of 1. So we're looking for the area that is under the curve at the point 1. And so this is a triangle. So think of the area being 1 half base times height. So 1 half times 1 times 2 is going to be 1. So from 0 to 1, the area of the curve is going to be 1. So think of g of 1 as the area from the very beginning up until 1. g of 2 is going to be the area of starting from 0 all the way until you get to 2, which means it's going to be the area of g of 0 plus the area of g of 1 plus the area of g of 2. So if you're looking for this next area, this is going to be a rectangle. 1 times 2 is 2. So g of 2 is going to be 1 plus 2, which is going to be 3. Because you're taking the area of each part as you're heading towards that number. So therefore, g of 3 is going to be the area of the curve from 0 all the way until you get to 3. Now we're going to take a rough sketch. So if you're looking at this area right here, think of it as being close to a triangle. So again, it's going to be 1 half times the base times the height. So again, it's 1. So 1 plus 2 plus 1 is going to be 4. So g of 3 is going to be from 0 all the way to 3, and it's all going to be the area under the entire portion up until that point. Now, g of 4, this is where it gets a little different. So when we take the area, we already know from, uh, from 0 to 3, we know the number is 4. But then this part right here, this is going to represent a negative 1 because it is below the x-axis. So g of 4 is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 1 minus 1 because we're taking the negative 1 of an area, which is going to be 3. And then g of 5, it is going to be all, all the way from 3 to 4 and then from 5, which again, we're looking at a rough triangle, which is also going to be a negative 1. So it's going to be 1 plus 2 plus 1 minus 1 
minus 1, which is going to be a 2. And we can now graph this. g of 0 is 0. g of 1 is 1. g of 2 is 3. g of 3 is 4. g of 4 is 3. And then g of 5 is 2. So our graph is going to look roughly like this. So the fundamental theorem of calculus part one again states that if you have a function it is going to be equal to the integral or area under the curve from zero to some x of some function t taking the derivative of t. It's going to be continuous and differential so the derivative of g is going to be equal to f. Think of it as like antiderivative. If you have fu some function f, you take the antiderivative to get g. That means if I take the derivative of g, I will get f. So we can write it as that if we take the derivative of our function of t, we will get f of x where it's continuous. Meaning, for an example, if we're wanting to find the derivative of this function, what we're going to do is technically we would take the integral of this function and then take the derivative of the integral, and it's going to end up being this function with respect to x. So our answer is going to be 1 plus, instead of it being a t squared, it is going to be x squared. Again, think of this as the form of when you take the derivative of an integral, they basically cancel each other out. And the fact that you had originally put in the value of x, that's why your answer is going to be in terms of x. Because what you're doing is you're taking the integral of a function, but then you're taking the derivative of that integral which is basically the original function with whatever variable you had placed. So for example, let's first assume we are wanting to take the derivative of d dx from 1 to x of the secant t dt. If we're taking the derivative of the integral the answer is just going to be the original function in terms of the variable that we are inputting. So our answer would be secant x. In this case, however, it's not just x. And by the way, the 1 um, goes away because when you take the integral and you plug in the number 1, you will get a number. When you take the derivative of that number, it goes away, it disappears. So that is why you're only going to have the original function back according to whatever variable that you had inputted. So in this case, it's a little bit different because we're not just taking a value of x, we're actually taking it in place of a function. So the answer for this is actually going to be the original function of what you had inputted, but you now have to take the derivative of x to the fourth, which becomes 4x cubed. So again, you had to take the derivative. This right here is basically telling me that I had to take the derivative of my function. Normally, it was just a variable, so it's just going to be the original function with that variable. However, because this now becomes a function and not just a variable, you have to take the derivative. Now, the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2. This states that if, if it's continuous, then you take the integral of function 
it's going to be basically the integral or antiderivative of you inputting B and then you're going to subtract inputting in A. F is going to be the antiderivative so that if you were to take the derivative of the antiderivative, you would have gotten the original function. For example, what it's saying is I'm going to take the integral of e to the x and then I'm going to input 3 and 1. Well, the integral of e to the x is e to the x because if you were to take the derivative of e to the x, you actually get e to the x. And now I'm going to plug in 3 and I'm going to plug in 1. So my answer is going to be e to the third minus me plugging in e to the 1. And then if you put that into your calculator, e to the 3 minus e to the 1 is going to give me 17.367. And what that is meaning is if I was to take, if I was to graph this, e to the x is going to look something like this. And then if I was to go from 1 to 3, sorry, if I was to go from 1 to 3 and I wanted to know the area underneath this curve, I would actually get 17.37 units. That would actually represent the amount of area under the curve. So in this case, if I was to take 9 minus x squared, which is going to be some parabola underneath this curve, and I want to know what is the area to where it stops at y equals 0. So I'm only looking for the area that is underneath this curve. So therefore, it is going to be the integral from negative 3 to 3, because that is where they intersect each other. That's where they intersect. And it is going to be 9 minus x squared dx. And I want to know the area from negative 3 to 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the integral. The integral of 9 is going to be 9x. Why? Because the derivative of 9x is 9. The integral of x squared is going to be 1 third x cubed. Why? Because if I take the derivative of 1 third x cubed, I will get x squared because 3 times a third cancels and then you subtract when you get x squared. And then I'm going from negative 3 to 3. So I'm going to get 9 times 3 minus one-third of three cubed minus nine times negative three minus one-third times negative three cubed. And if I put that whole thing in the calculator, I should get 36. So in this one, I want to evaluate the curve, the area under the cosine curve from zero to pi over two. So what I'm wanting to know from 0 to pi over 2, I want to know what is cosine. So if I was to graph this, the cosine function goes like this, and then I'm looking from 0 to pi over 2. So I want to know what is the area of just this part right here. So therefore, I'm going to take the integral of cosine, which is sine. Why? Because the derivative of sine is cosine. And I'm going from 0 to pi over 2. So I'm going to do sine of pi over 2 minus sine of 0. And it's going to give me the number 1. In this case, we are going from negative 1 to 3 of 1 over x squared. Okay, there's actually a trick that happens here. If I was 
to do this solely by the integral, okay? Think of one over x squared as x to the negative two. And so if I was to take the integral of this, it would give me x to the, um, plus one, which is negative one, and it would be negative one. So I believe it would be negative one over x would be the integral. Because if I take the derivative of this, I would get one over x squared. And then if I go from negative one to three, I will get a negative one third minus a negative one over negative one, which would give me a negative one third plus one, which would give me a two thirds, okay? But that is actually not the answer. And here is why. If you were to graph one over x squared, it would be a graph that looks like this and a graph that looks like this. And you're wanting to go from negative one to three. And here's the part that's wrong. Well, here's the part that, um, here's our problem. This is not a continuous function. Because you cannot take the derivative at zero. So therefore, because it's not a continuous function, you actually cannot find the integral from negative one to three of one over x squared. So therefore, the answer would be, does not exist. So to recap, there are two fundamental theorem of calculus parts. The first part tells you that if g equals the integral of some function, then if you take the derivative of g, you will get the original function back. Part two states that if I take the integral, then I can subtract plugging in from A to B in order to figure out what the area under the curve is gonna be. So, first one, to take the derivative, try to attempt these problems and then hit resume to check your answers. All right, on the first one, it says find the derivative. That means what you're doing is you're taking the integral and then you're taking the derivative of the integral, which means they're gonna cancel out, leaving you the original problem with the variable that you're plugging in. So the answer should be s minus s squared raised to the eight. Again, this five means nothing because if you take the integral, plug in a number, you then have a number for an answer. And when you take the derivative of a number, it goes away because the derivative of a constant is zero. That's why the five does not matter. On this next one, we are now taking the, think of square root of x as x to the one half. So to find the integral, I'm gonna add one, which becomes three halves, but I need to offset the three halves so I'm gonna put a 2 thirds in front. Now let's see if that works. If I take the derivative of this, 3 halves times 2 thirds cancel each other, and then if I subtract one, I get a half, so it did work. And then I'm going from one to nine. So I'm gonna put in a nine, and I'm gonna subtract and putting a one. So two thirds times nine to the three halves gives me 18. And two thirds times one gives me two thirds. So 18 minus two thirds is gonna either give me 17.3 repeating or it is gonna give me 52 over three. 
Next, sketch the region enclosed by the given curves. So in this case, if I graph x cubed, it is going to look like this. And I am wanting to go from y equals 0, which is basically the x-axis, and then when x equals 1. So I am looking for this area, which means I am going from 0 to 1, because that's 1, this is 0, of x cubed. So to find the integral, if I add 1, I get x to the 4th, but I need to offset it, so I need to put a 1 fourth in the beginning, because 4 times a 4th cancel. And I subtract 1, leaving me x cubed. And I'm going from 0 to 1. So my answer is going to be 1.